else. I mean, evil geniuses in secret have a story passed back and forth. They had met in multiple finals in multiple LAN events and have series that have gone either way, right? And this makes this final, right before we go into TI, all the more important for one of these teams to establish dominance as basically the top team in the world right now. That's what we're looking at here. Yep, it's uh, it's fantastic teams. We've got a, a small little problem with the players. We'll get this sorted out ASAP for them. Everything has to be absolutely perfect for EG as well as Secret. But luckily the ESL crew, they've been working hard throughout the entire weekend. And of course, while it might have actually started to start raining, it's not going to dampen our spirits for this game. Not only have we been here the entire time, this absolutely wonderful crowd here in Frankfurt has also been here sticking with us through thick and thin and have gotten themselves to have the grand final, which a lot of people were expecting. They were expecting EG versus Secret. It's exactly what they got. This, this crowd has been amazing, by the way. I mean, just hearing the roar of the crowd every single time we see one of those big plays, man, I've, I've actually talked to a couple of people who are completely new to Dota, and they've just been blown away by the just the atmosphere here of everyone getting so excited over seeing top two teams like this playing up against each other. Evil geniuses. So, Toby, I don't know about you, but I have been feeling very torn on this finals. People kept asking me, okay, who do you got for the finals? Who's going to win the finals? And mm -hmm. I kept responding with a different answer every single time because I couldn't decide. <laughs> I, I kept telling them, you know what, my heart is for EG, but my head is for Secret. You know, I felt like, I just feel like EG, this is their chance to be able to finally take a first place finish after, you know, it's been a while since we've seen them do that. And meanwhile, Secret have been looking really strong. I mean, their series up against IG was impressive as all hell. Yeah, man, they, they've they been playing amazingly. Secret can basically do anything they want to, when they want to, and how they want to. They don't care what the meta is, they'll make their own. While EG, they, while they might loosely stick to the meta, for them, their timing, their rotations, PPD and Albi, their combination together is wonderful to watch. Universe on the offlane having a lot more of an impact in this competition than I've been seeing him have in previous competitions. And of course, the boy wonder Samael. He has been absolutely unstoppable. His two performances during the semi-final, I don't think you'll see a better example of how a mid can walk over a team. Both teams have so much to play for, and at this point, Gap, I'm going to say I'm massively biased towards good Dota 2. These guys are going to play awesome Dota, and we're going to be rewarded for a full best of five. The more games we have, the greater it will be. What a cop-out. So you're not going to side with either one of these no, teams, are you? You're not going to make it. All right, well, I feel like secrets... Looking at just this draft, I feel like Evil Geniuses are going to take game one. I really like the EG lineup, and I think Hans, I think, was the first person to say, you know, Secret are put on a timer here, and they got to close out the game pretty early. They need to be able to play this game uh, pretty perfectly, essentially, because you've got a lot of problems, uh, uh, potentially, for our Sven. Sven is a really great physical damage carry, especially when coupled up with the Wisp, that is able to burst down heroes really quickly with his insane amount of physical damage. It's good versus certain cores such as Leshrac, who are relatively squishy and can output a large amount of damage over time. But then you look at certain carries like Razor, who are sort of the antithesis to the Sven. Excellent at being able to kite around melee heroes. Not so much with the, the Wisp, but still it is a factor. And of course, being able to drain away that Sven's damage via Static Link is going to be a big factor as well. So uh, the Sven is going to have some issues. Maybe he can clear through some mail pretty quickly, but Fear is still going to be his nemesis. You're 100% right, man. So it's all about positioning for Secret. The supports will have to do a hell of a lot of work, but our laning phase is already underway, so up on top is PPD and Universe. We're in this dual combo, but Universe, the first turn, it's just harassment, nothing much more than that, but then again with Koro and Puppy being tethered together, Universe is forced to Icarus dive away down to 51 HP, and PPD just puts a stopper on the lane with Aphysia. He needs to hold this creep wave at bay so Universe can find his level 2, and of course, be a little bit safer near that tower now that Icarus dive is on cooldown. Yeah, I was going to say, as I was watching the draft, I love the Phoenix last pick. I feel it really tied together e the Evil Geniuses lineup quite well, and I love it paired up with a Phoenix. I mean, first of all, just the laning phase is so much better for a Phoenix if you're able to get just a couple of Fissure blocks and move the Creep Wave Equilibrium to the Phoenix's favor so it can pick up level 2, maybe even level 3. But notice what Secret are doing. They are doing an incredibly good job at controlling this Equilibrium. Despite the blocks of the Fissures, they've managed to still keep the lane pushed
pushing into their tower. Speaking of Fissure as well, notice PPG's rotation. He walked up on top of the little stairwell, just north of the mid lane. It's just in uh, this little stairwell up here, a little bit further north. Uh, and he was waiting for the opening to actually have a crack at S4. But the Dire Observer Wards from Secret are so perfectly placed. One watching the top ward area and the rotation down from top, which is where they knew the Earthshaker would start. And then the second one on, on the S4 side of the lane, so he can keep tabs on this. And that'll allow him to see if Earthshaker's trying to throw one from the other side. Kuro and Universe just trading blows. No one should be able to find any kill on either of them here. Uh, but just making sure that this Zeus, who is very easy to gank, cannot be ganked by the Earthshaker Fissure Block, because he will die very quickly. The slow, the split Earth from the Shrak, he's got his own setup up, up against the Zeus. Yeah, they need a, a very aggressive, like, I really love the mid ward in particular, because this allows them to be able to see over onto the uh, the Radiant side of the mid lane and see the potential Earthshaker rotating over. I mean, Fisher is such a long-range initiation that just that one long-range stun, even from the Radiant side, could catch out the Zeus, and then the follow-up Split Earth and Lightning could be enough to overwhelm the Zeus. So the warding is really well done by Secret here, playing very much into what evil geniuses want to run here. PPD is now going to be forced to try and do constant pulling while AUI continually forces out Zai. And Zai's had a real hard time down here. Only two CS. You're talking about him being forced out. Like Zai's only just TP back and he's using shards to farm up the lane. But when this happens from fear, you're static link, force him back underneath the tower. Life is just hard, but not as hard as it is for Universe, who still hasn't managed to crack his second level, and is being zoned out really by one S4, trouble in middle. Koro gonna tether himself in, but then again, S4 with a crack of his body boss still on cooldown. He's gonna go down! S4, Man, he can't reach him in time, so S4 will survive. Koro, right place, right time, and right Dota channel. They may even go for more. The crazy thing is, with this dual combo, they're able to share each other's bottles through the tether. And that means they can keep the pressure on Kuro even chasing Universe far into the top lane. Yeah, Samael, I, I think he realized that, okay, with the Wiz tether, they're going to be able to dive me, and he just tries and turns, and maybe just didn't realize he wasn't going to be able to output enough damage. Also, there was a Winter Wyvern who was going to come in, who could have potentially gotten off a, uh, a save via the Cold Embrace, but unfortunately, AUI was just a second too late, and now is going to be forced back as S4 and Kuro take control of that four-minute room. Yeah which means instant life, instant mana for both heroes as they share their own fate. Want to keep a very close eye as well on Arteezy, because while all this is going on, EG's attention is being dragged towards the middle lane. While Arteezy is getting more and more space, I'm seeing him with the boots and the gloves so far. I'm wondering if this is going to be the early Midas for Arteezy. Oh, the rotation's coming out. The split earth is inside. He's hoping to be able to get the Oh! Caught! The vision might be able to block him enough time. They embrace the mail. So S4's waiting. One more second on that lightning bolt. Zyzer dropping low for the lightning bolt. The up climbing! S4 is able to get the kill over the Shrek, but it's tip for task. With also that task guy going down to continue to chase Owie, who goes onto his hovels to try and run back to base. He'll survive while Fear chasing up the puppy on the bottom lane. He's got traits, got the movement speed on puppy with a plasma field. The damage, not enough. He realizes Shallow Grave still available for puppy. It's not easy to find that kill. And the TP in from Zai, maybe he can shut up and hold Fear close from the tower. That looks like he's not going to give it a shot. Not one Radiant Creek Wave is still in force. Middle lane, S4, stun on him. There's a fissure from PD to set up, and Samael just makes it look easy with the Lightning Bolt. Two deaths on Samael, but if they can get a couple more kills on just this one pickoff on Zeus helps Samael out in an incredible Daya's amount. I mean, being able to attack. bring in that experience for the last track is a serious factor. Obviously, he needs a lot of gold, but levels mean so much. The faster he gets to that level 8, has the maxed out Split Earth and Lightning Storm. He is a significant force that can pretty much pop almost any hero in this game. If you lead with the Fisher, you follow up on anybody else, you're going to be able to kill them, except for maybe oh, the easy. Sven. Top lane goes for it. God's Drake, the spot oh. no attack is pulling. Universe down to 25 HP. Don't know if calculated or just lucky. Boy, Universe, man, they are putting S4. so much pressure. Again, the fish. This time, though, the Latrax do not follow in time. And in fact, yeah, there it is. Rando chill on top. Not really Rando. S4, less the Thunder go Wrath Rip. Howie on bottom lane. Okay, he's just embracing himself to hold Zai back. I think that's exactly why PPD was really trying to force that kill there in the middle lane in order to try and stop S4 from picking up his level 6 because there wasn't anything Universe can do there. He was brought to 20 HP and had to run himself back to the fountain. Of course, the moment that S4 hits that level 6, he's going to pop the kill for the kill. 
And that means an easy one. Three for one on S4. Samael and PPD again thinking about it for Kuro in the neighborhood. Gonna spur out the balls and try and have a crack into Samael. But the Fissure will keep S4 at bay for now. But it's still got four more ball charges between the two of them. So they're perfectly all right, Kuro and S4 going for this. And in fact, the extra TP support's gonna come in. There's no vision from the Radiant side in this area. And in fact, they actually use Zai to refresh up both of the bottles. In fact, Zai, now with the chance to win. There's no ball in. Samael in trouble, but not dead yet. The pop's over, ripping through Zai's life. Kuro's keeping him alive from down in the river. And then maybe they can actually turn this. EG right behind on the S4. The fear plasma field, the damage. It's not enough to kill off Zeus. Zai has most of the time in the charge. It Beautiful. keeps fear out. They couldn't face the situation. Down in S4, he still got the high ground. 11 seconds to Thunder God's Wrath. If they can get one more lightning bolt into Fear, or maybe just a Whisper of Balls. Fear is critical. Can they get it off? Three seconds, two seconds. The Sal will keep Fear alive. So it will not be enough damage from S4 to find that kill. Incredibly well Radiant played by Secret. They are right. dealing with these rotations. Oh, lightning bolt. They go for the fortified. arc as well. Trying to have another crack over on Fear. Unfortunately, the rotations from the Winter Wyvern can't actually save that well. I mean, the Cold Embrace is a minor amount of healing, but it's percentage-based. This early on to the game, it dwarfs in comparison to just the raw magic that is being output by the Zeus. I got my answer for Arteezy. It looks like we're, we're rushing up into a BKB at this point as we have the Ogre Club as well as the Power Treads. He's been triggering his God Strength every time he can to try and force down this Tier 1 tower on the top lane. Currently brought it down to half of its life. And this is also is keeping EG with their eyes on the top lane. Because they're worried if they leave it for too long, Arteezy's just going to cleave through it all. Yeah, now movement speed is pretty critical here for the Sven, so the SNY is also an option. Um, just being able to stay ahead or keep up with the Razor is a very critical factor, coupled with the Tether. You can pretty much get to max movement speed, then you throw out the War Cry, and 522 is there, right? So I, SNY is a potential option as well. BKB may be a necessity, um, though, just because there's so much magic damage from EG. Yeah, that's what I was worried about, not to mention the long-range control stuns. But then again, if you throw out the Fission, you're still going to walk around it, and you burn, like, three four seconds worth of your BKB time just walking around a rock wall. It's not the kind of landscaping you really had in mind. The big question for me is, what are they going to do with Universe? Uh, the Phoenix is a very special offlane in the fact that he can do so much in the mid game if he's just able to get levels, but it's so hard for him to make the laning phase work oftentimes. Uh, Universe got caught in, the, in this sort of trap where he's facing up against really good supports who are playing it well, and the supports actually got a, an experience advantage over this Phoenix and were able to just man up against him every single time. The Phoenix can fight against that, couldn't push back against the support, so every single time he felt pressure, he was the one who wiltered first so he didn't get any experience out of this lane and he still doesn't have his level six he's pretty much a non-factor at this point toby the last time we saw him was in that middle lane fight where his fire spirits damage was so minimal that it was actually being outdone by the healing of kuro well one of the options he will have is once you see this razor finish up mech that fear is probably going to group up with the rest of eg uh it could be with a little as well or they could just try and do like a 3-1-1 but that will allow the phoenix to move down to the bottom lane then universe gets his time to hit level six then maybe he'll join the fights but it's the time to farm it's the time to play catch up while the rest of his team potentially unless they find themselves in team fights they don't, they don't really want that what they kind of want is just to force secrets hand to always be looking where eg is moving because that was one thing which secret has already shown very well today during the semi-finals they know how to efficiently move across the map and come up with a bad trace. Now middle lane, lightning, follow-up stun, Edgeball's in real trouble, the pulse Nova, Kuro could not keep him alive. And that's just a good kill from EG. Yeah, I believe Kuro even cut his tether half a second before we see uh, our, our Zeus end up going down because he realized, okay, there's no way it can save him, and I don't want to be too close to that Leshrac. So um, that was a smart move by Kuro and EG, another well executed gang, especially with leading Samael moving forward in order, in order to make sure he got a good Pulse Nova range. Well, Artesi's finished his next item. We won't see if it's Nest Fly, but he does go for the max movement speed you were hoping for. It just comes with a cost, and that's through the Mask of Madness for Artesi's Artesi. He hits hard, he hits fast. Yeah, this is easily one of the most damage-efficient items, items for a spend to pick up because you already have such a big damage increase through God's strength, and your melee this movement speed is incredibly important to you, so you get the movement speed there, obviously the attack speed, just attack. being able to get the added benefit out of that God's strength damage increase.
Well, on grind time for ED, this is rapidly approaching level six. In fact, he's only one level now behind Koro. I'm not. I'm saying that's a great thing when I'm actually comparing him to Sports for Seek. But their off laner of Targar is just behind level seven. So he's too, too far behind the rest of Secret. And mainly it's the level 6, because once you get the Nova attack. up and running, as also the panel was saying, it's very difficult to kill off that egg. Maybe now with the Mask of Manus for Sven, you can remove it, but that means Sven's going to walk in point blank range on the egg. It's not a simple task to do, but there's a lot of stuns of control coming in from EG. Yeah, I think there are two things that's introduced really well with the Phoenix egg. Uh, there are heroes that are able to, to stuns and can actually initiate. So, for example, Lion with a Blink Dagger, or Shaker with a Blink Dagger. Those kind of heroes can provide a big disruption provide the disables to allow the egg to go off top and also heroes that are relatively squishy but can out huge amounts of damage in short periods of time so your less rank your razor both of these heroes are heroes that you probably want to target early on into the fight otherwise you're going to be feeling 500 damage per second from each one of them so they can actually draw attention onto the egg and allow the less rank and, and razor to be able to get up and close and start dealing that pulse nova damage or start getting that static link damage stolen uh, it's going to be a hard time for Secret, even if they Radiant's do kill the egg, to win the fight. Attack. Also, Secret are grouping up. PPD just bit of, had a bit of a mission there. He's trying to check out what's happening inside the Radiant Jungle, so he left one Observer Ward behind, watching the stacks and watching when they're being farmed up. And they had another Sentry Ward just making sure there was no vision around the upper part of the river if you are going to try and flank in from the left. It's and while they smoke. do that, now they smoke up. Yeah, it's definitely time to smoke because AUI has just picked up his level 6 Winter's Curse, obviously being a pivotal uh, uh, ability for them to be able to have to successfully get these pickoffs on even the strongest of heroes, and that's why they rotate bottom, right? The Sven just showed himself if they could have gotten a pickoff on him, it would have been major. Plus the, the Winter Wyvern, as much as it was a bit of a detriment for in the early laning phase is being a support to try and save the middle lane up against Radiant's magic damage didn't really work attack. out too often there it is a huge counter to the west and this is really smart ppd i think they've caught on to this fact because everyone is missing from the map but then again maybe eg have it they're hovering around but they're not Dyer's actually having a look in winter wyvern could potentially just ice burn up but yep with the god strength available the mask of madness already secret taken for a shot eg coming out the shards cannot catch ppd out of position in fact, Arteezy, Snowball's coming Dyer's up, he's coming in from Zane, he's going up to Ash, he doesn't actually get there the whole entire way, so they raise him up and Zane being kept alive with Puppy as well as Goro, relocating nice him back save. into the pit, keeping him alive, and this does not give EG a position to punish Secret. In fact, they may just still go in for it. The relocate there, they have to protect him. Raze has already popped that eye of the storm, and Arteezy just moves up to the high ground to ensure they don't come any further. Then again, Koro, maybe a little bit too close. The shot's in the start. Mm. He's on the wrong side of it, but PPD front line. The Fissure, Koro's so low. Oh, he's there, but he can't do enough damage. Now Arteezy just can't reach past the shards. They have to force out the way the safety. That's from their four. The shards block the ramp. No deaths from either side. Just very, very close escapes. I mean, even when it was, like, there were so many good plays there from Secret. Getting outside of that Roshan pit, they were potentially in a bad position to get caught by Winter's Curse. So Zai, the moment he sees the Winter Wyvern, immediately pops the Snowball, right? Because not only does he have the Snowball to save himself, but he can potentially grab his allies mid-Winter's Curse, which is a huge counter. So he pops that, but then the Winter Wyvern backs up, and he's stuck in his position of, oh no, I'm gonna go over the cliff. I'm gonna be in a bad position, right? Somebody needs to save me. And that's where Secret cover their allies like beautifully and it's not just the Kuro relocate but it's the positioning of secret as a whole to make sure that evil geniuses couldn't take advantage of the sort of Radiant's mispositioning from Zai due to the attack. snowball that you know was a good idea but didn't work out as they expected and then of course Zai's follow-up he just keeps shouting when you've got such a, a narrow choke point how is EG Radiant's meant to move forward and play up against a hero attack. like a Tusker if he's actually sitting in this back position it's it's just great play by all. Now PPD again, like he's hoping he can just do the basic combination now. Secret don't have vision of this, they see some mail in the mid just throwing out lightning, but that kind of means to die that maybe he can have a crack some mail. Just getting caught out by the shards, but with the support right behind him, he's very, very happy to be in such a position because it means Secret may initiate over the river. 
Yeah, another good amount of synergy that I don't think we've talked about just yet, but it's the Razor, yes. who's a natural mech buyer um, with the Leshrac, who is a hero that obviously needs the added sustain from his allies, and if you don't actually have healers, having some sort of board that you get a mech is a huge benefit. It really synergizes well with his squishy intelligence hero. So um, this is actually going to play very well into the favor of evil geniuses when it comes to team fights, but I really feel like Seeker just kind of outplaying you. see PPD. He's walking up. Yeah, he doesn't want to come this way. The Shah's a fissure. He gets three with a total stop because Echo Sam of Arbor 2 can't get off in time. Puffy Shadow Wave will be able to get the kill. Oh, and an early four staff being picked up by S4 does help Sai get out of position tower. there, where he was going to take a lot of damage from the last rank. I really like this early four staff play. I think it makes a lot of sense, particularly since we do have so many critical disables. If there's a Fisher lead in, he could save an ally from the follow up split earth that just naturally going to follow. Mm hmm. I was actually able to help him out too when they're fighting on that bottom rune area. Universe. Okay, this just looks too easy for RTZ. If he runs after Universe at the moment, he's just gonna end up dying because Aoi and Samael are both waiting for him and now a little too close. But Aoi spotted. might be holding him for the moment, but it's not gonna happen. Yeah, Samael got spotted there and Kuro was ready to go with the relocate save as well. So uh, Team Secret are getting, as we watching Team Secret, like, are playing beautifully and defending their allies and making sure that everyone does get out alive when they come down to these engagements. Secret is taking more of an advantage because EG are the ones looking for these kills, and they're just not finding the openings Radiance right now, which means Secret are getting more attack. of an advantage through farming. Yeah. Well, they're going to get more of an advantage with this T1 town dropping as well. Universe sitting in the back lines. He still doesn't want to get involved. He wants to finish up his hand of minus before he does attack. anything else. They're Dyer's losing the T1 tower, tower and they can keep pushing. Gold Strength has not been Dyer's required to be used. Now middle lane, the shards fly out. The fortifications keeping that T1 tower alive for secret. And Fear wants it, but S4 snowball in. They with the Walrus Punch. The trying to find the kick off for Fear at the next charge. Kuro will relocate himself to the side with a vision from DVD. He holds him there. The Echo Sam is not enough to keep enough space between Razor and Walrus. Oh, and the Anchor for Samal comes in with a pulse. No, going for time, but the Shadow Grace making it difficult. Ali will also arrive. Samal needs to finish the job. Finally, he will be able to do so, so it's a two for one trade off. Keep it lucky to survive. Meanwhile, on the north lane, Sven with the gold strength is taking out the tier two tower. Yeah, it does come at a very heavy cost. Kuro, though, by the way, is able to relocate at the last second there back up to the top lane in order for him to help out the Sven take that tower, but also saved his own life in the process. I think evil geniuses are not going to be they are happy with the kills they got, but they just didn't get enough, in my opinion, to make it worth the trade off of that tier two tower in the top lane. Arteezy is going to be massive, man. He already has that BKB plus Mask of Mandis. With the Blink Dagger now being picked up, this is an incredibly aggressive build from Sven, and it's just the way I think Arteezy needed to play it for this game. They have to make sure they've taken a small advantage now. they got to build that advantage from here on out. And with the initiation, too, like Sven's very, very tanky when he jumps in. There's four points of the board, right? So you're giving bonus 20 armor, high movement speed, the immunity which comes from your BKB, and your ability to jump point-blank range with a huge amount of damage to even one, no, it's not be one hit, but maybe three or four hit down Samael. Uh, Winter Wyvern won't survive for very long, and I would be very, very careful about PPD ever getting a stun off, because he'll get stunned himself. So they have to keep their eye open to see where RTZ is coming. Just like now in the mid, jumped in, goes for Universe, it was available, but the damage is just too much. Zeus will help out from Thunder God's Wrath. Now we have very quick TP in. PP is already fairly injured as well because he got some spill damage. Obviously hitting every hero with that with that thunder contrast. Yeah, I mean two hits like that. But the embrace will keep smell alive. They hold Ben there too. But not for long. In comes S4 Kuro. It's not a bad idea from AUI to use that Winter's Curse on a BKB hero like that. Maybe they could have actually followed that up if there wasn't the relocate from the side. Unfortunately, AUI, his choice to do that Winter's Curse meant they didn't have anything to punish the kind of aggressive relocate play. By the way, I just want to say that Kuro's positioning of that relocate was beautiful, right? Like, he puts it aggressive, but not overly aggressive where he's in the range of the tower or potentially any of EG right away. Our team's got to get out of here. No BKB charge. PPD starts with a stubby point. Away. Just in time, they know he's in the tree line. Samel goes to the sun, hits it perfectly. Arteezy will die, nothing can save him. Gone straight, even commit the echo to slam from PPG. A little bit of overkill. That would have been, they get the big one. That would have been so impressive if Gideon managed to actually TP away in time. That clutch blink dagger timing. Now it looks like they're going to fight him in a lane already. Universe leading the charge here with the end. Oh, 
Keep it even the stun. The moment to bad the crash. They're not more easy to get the stun, but Universe means it can come back full life. They chase after S4. There's already two down. The shovel creeps there, but more surprise than S4. Will it survive the CD? He holds with a dump in the oh. back. He gets time to get it off. It is a three and one on the sidelines at the moment. Still an excellent fight for Evil Geniuses. Getting the pick off in this event, immediately rotating. I love the fact the Universe was sitting in the trees, waiting that one out. He's like, guys, you've gotten that kill. If you get back to middle right now, I can force this fight with the egg. He did it perfectly. Now it goes 8-8. While well, it has been a low killing game, it's still been very action intense as both of the lineups coming close to each other. Just going to straight off trade, but we do look over the map. There's only tier two towers left for Team Secret. Yeah. While EG, well, they've lost. They've lost quite heavily, too. The fact that the top lane has no external towers anymore. They do, however, still hold their T1 tower in mid lane, which you would think in most games would give them a positional advantage. But the fact you're going up against them just kind of throws that one out the window. Yeah, especially the, the advantage that was lost there from Secret is particularly important when you have a build-up item like Bloodstone that was completed just before that fight. Samael has 11 Bloodstone charges already, and we've seen what Samael can do when he gets ahead of the enemy. I'm still interested to see if you can do it up against this enemy. There's so much damage in the hands of Sven, and Arteezy just keeps farming. They're giving him as many stacks as possible. He's rapidly approaching 12,000 net west. Smell is nipping on his heels, and at this point, Smell is obviously able to continuously do a hell of a lot of damage as long as the mana is there, while Arteezy is a little bit more tied to his god strength until he's capable of buying up a big damage-dealing item, which more than likely in this style of game, well, you can go Monkey King Bar, you can go Daedalus, you can kind of go whatever you really want to. A scouting Zeus ultimate being used there to see if they can spy out if evil geniuses were going for a smoke tank or something, but it's simply EG playing very defensively right now. They know they, they've seen that blink dagger from RTZ. They're a little bit afraid of getting caught out by that one. Usually when you see a blink dagger, this kind of build from the Sven, it means a lot of aggression, it means a lot of pickoff capabilities, and you're going to take that one kill and then immediately take his tower afterwards with the physical damage increase of God's strength. Well, Secret are actually backing up and spending a little bit more time farming, probably because of that last team fight that they lost. If they lose any more, this game's rapidly spiral out of control for them. But Evil Geniuses, the interesting player to watch here in these team fights, is actually going to be the Winter Wyvern. AUI, his position not only in Winter's Curse, because he's a direct counter to the Wisp, but he's also a direct counter to the Sven, where a primary source of damage is all physical. So Cold Embrace, if he's able to target the right hero at the right time, he could completely mitigate the Sven heavy amount of net worth that he has accomplished. Which is when they have to step up to the mark as well as the Tusker. The Tusker at this point is going more utility. We've got Mech now being completed 24 minutes into the game on the Tusk. He's walking back to base now to pick it up. Uh, and over on Zeus, the Bloodstone is rapidly approaching completion as well for S4. A couple other items. Glimmer Cape being picked up by the Wisp. It is obviously a huge increase in the survivability of Kuro, as well as a potential save for some allies. I love Zai's build of the mech with the arcane boots. We're going to later on see Guardian Greaves, though I'm not sure how early he wants that item. Uh, perhaps a Blink Dagger or something. Some sort of saving mechanism, I think, would be better before the Guardian Greaves is complete. Samael. Oh, I thought he was about to try with the initiation on the Zai with the lightning. Wouldn't really have that much follow-up, however, the Universe would have to Icarus dive himself in with sprites to try and get in his way to allow for the Split Earth follow-up, because it was a pretty long way across the river. How long we got until we have Roshan up? In fact, I had no time. Roshan is already up and available. So this will be our next mark. Secret can, we've already seen they can just jump in and quickly take out Roshan. So EG have to keep their eyes open for this. Right now, they've only got one Observer Ward, which is right on top of the Dire Observer Ward, but that will see anyone entering into the pit from the front end. And if anyone blinks over, if they... I don't know, there's Snowball, but uh, if they relocate him, then none of that will be spotted. Well, there's the Solar Crest. Uh, they have so much Roche taking potential. Oh. Now with that minus armor item plus the physical damage from Sven. They tether in, they smoke in, and the Dire have... No Radiant time. have no vision of this whatsoever. In fact, even S4, he's found that small little point where the ward doesn't see up to, and that Roshan is dead very, very quickly. Oh yeah, they have no no vision and no time to be able to get there uh, in order to stop Secret. So a secondary Roshan going their way. Evil Geniuses, I think, expect this. Even if they didn't know Roshan was up right now, they kind of expect Secret to be able to snag this one. I mean, currently, EG want to play on their side of the map. They don't want to move outside of these towers. They don't want to get picked up. They're still trying to complete some of those basic team fight items. 
items, mm -hmm. such as the Aghanims on Razor. And that Aghanims on Razor is going, is going to arrive, but I would also ask the big question, how much work is it really going to be doing? Because I'm looking at a lot of a lot of armor, which is now starting to arrive for secret. Artizi has practically finished. In fact, yes. yeah, basically has finished up his full assault cuirass. Now he farms up this camp, mm -hmm. and then we've also got the weave coming in from Dazzle, who's already up at level 11. So you've got a level two weave available for secret. Their armor is going to pop through the roof during these fights. I love Samael's build. This is this is Samael through and through, right? Samael's a, a very talented mechanical player who Radiant's loves to be able to outplay his opponents, right? Attack. And we saw it with the SF in that earlier series where he picked up a, a kind of a little bit of a later blink dagger. Sometimes you would see SF go for a little bit more of a late game build, um, but Samael fully adopting the mid game aggression and goes for the blink dagger and he utilized it beautifully to win several fights. And he's going to try and do something similar here. Backed up by the Yule Scepter, this also means he could have some potential saves for himself against the Radiant's initiation of Secret. Under EG understand where Secret are moving. There's a Radiant Ward just sitting in the, in the just the lower part of the mid river, and I was able to scatter this Ven moving into the Radiant Jungle. Now that also Puppy shows himself on the bottom lane with that Solar Crest. He's just flagging the fact that most of Secret are down there, while Wisp is just the illusions which were dates, and you're hoping that we commit anything major to this. Uh, in fact, yeah, they won't. It's just a basic attack. Samal blinks up and gets rid of it so they can get rid of the vision at least. And then ED. Now, do they defend this bottom tower? Puppy, Ooh. you've got a dazzle harassing down a bottom tower. You have to do something about this. Alright, they must know a little bit more than they let on. Evil Tone just have to cut off these heroes' bottom. Puppy already getting stunned up at the same time. Zai being controlled up by Fear already sold 112 points of damage. He will dive in. So far, the only thing that can protect him. Well, that's easy. Checking out the alley. Two hits oh, to no. bring him down. At the same time, Fear, so much stolen damage. 224 points of it. He can carve apart most of the secret team. He's already managed to take two with him. And now can move over to Arteezy. No BKB. Still has the Aegis, but the up by the Fidja. They'll turn through him. The Plaza Field goes down, and Fear's going to be ready. Or oh, is he? He doesn't so have BKB. Wait for the sun. The Aegis comes up as well. They just hit him to spend. They take away his damage. Koro, there's no real attack to take him, but he's keeping that overcharge going. Puppy behind him, letting off that heal. But again, another Fidja stuff. Breaking down, just passing it on the edge of Sven Koro is doing all the work he possibly can to keep Arteezy alive, and it is enough. Ar Arteezy has more HP than EG has mana. They simply ran out of steam. The West Rack ran out of mana. PP used his last Fisher there, even Fear. His ultimate ran out, and he didn't have much more to go on. Uh, that was just beautiful healing from Kuro, and ultimately, another solid play from Secret, being able to stay alive through the initiation of EG. It seems like Secret are very adept at being able to adapt uh, to address whenever EW Evil Geniuses go for a gank or go for some sort of smoked out team fight, Secret are very quick on the mark to be able to respond to it. I want to see if Sumel has a crack at mid. This Sire Observer Ward from Secret's about to time out. It's only got three seconds left in that mid lane. And once it times out, the blink dagger which Sumail has picked up to go with his Yule Scepter is just going to be too easy to find out. In fact, yeah, there's, there's that scouting Zeus stuff that got wrath again. He really wants to know where EG is so Secret can get the best positioning and still find the maximum maximum amount of farms possible on the map. So no one's in the Radiant Jungle. Instantly, RTZ heads there. Yeah, PBD is now going to try and take some time to finish up his blink dagger. Hopefully, he doesn't get caught by the rotation of RTZ. Though. The Observer World sees him. Yeah. No more joy. No Haste. more joy indeed. PPD. Oh, he's so close to it. Just needs another 200 gold. He's thinking about fish in the farm, but he can take two creep hits if he uses it now. The oh, he's the 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 relocate up to top lane. Looks like some male coming in with that haste room provoked a very defensive response from Secret. Well, do they know where he is? In fact, they're pinging out saying, I think the, uh, yes, the male, in fact, TP down the bottom lane to try and blink forward. The Yulsep is on cooldown, but he can see Kuro. Uh, they just run away. War cry to pop. In fact, they can't see him. The dire sentry wards down there. There's no observer wards for the radiant side apart from the one on the right. So I didn't actually see Kuro leave. Yeah, that's a nice defensive factor as a blink dagger. When you relocate in, you come back. From that relocate, you can instantly blink on the Sven and then go ahead and tether away on the Wisp. 
very nice combination. 30 minutes in, and it's dead even 10 to 10. The Secret taking a slight lead in both gold as well as experience. Evil Geniuses, though, do have some big items that they finished or are going to be finishing soon. We talked about the Agonims on Fear. Obviously, some mail is host to a, a swarm of items, the Bloodstone, Yules, and Blink Dagger. He's already got another 3K, so we can afford to build up even more stats. Now, armor wouldn't be a bad idea necessarily against the Sven damage, but you can also depend on just the cold embrace. So maybe he goes for some just more raw stats with something like an Octarine Core, which would benefit quite highly. If you manage to get a, a embrace there on the Leshrac, who has his Nova out, he's not only healing up, he's def he's defending against this damage, but he's also getting that spell steal. Yeah, everything looks kind of nice for that kind of thing, but uh, okay, well, there's your plate now. Yep, so I don't mind this at all. Obviously, the physical damage from the Sven is the scariest part of Secret right now. Another Thunder Ghost Wrath being used by Secret before the fight's going to begin. And EG might feel like they got a little bit of a window of opportunity where that damage won't do as much. In fact, Fear getting up in the faces of Secret underneath their own Tier 2 tower. And the smell with the Edict is just burning through the Tier 2. Fortification, Secret. Okay, well, they burnt it, but they burnt it late. Which means there is actually no defense on that Tier 2 tower. And it's very easy for EG to keep going when they try and push the next time. Top tower is yeah, I mean, attack. the zoo showing himself in that top lane um, with the, via the boots of travel coming in and trying to push down that lane. There's no tier two there, right? So evil geniuses say, go ahead, you can push it all the way, the way to the base. You're not going to be here to defend that middle tier two, so we can easily take it with the Aghanim's upgrade of uh, Eye of the Storm and uh, get themselves an extra bit of gold, which is going to almost even out this, this lead. I mean, 5,000 at 32 minutes is not that big of a lead for Team Secret. And let's not forget that most of their net worth is centered on just one hero. That's RTZ, which a melee uh, carry. Puppy's dead. Puppy is most definitely dead. Where PPD he? blinks. He's looking for the fissure. He's out of range. Now he walks a couple of minutes further. In the way, the They might be coming in. Oh, and he goes out. So Kuro will leave, but you've kind of just sacrificed a dazzle for a wisp. You're going to give him armor, and potentially yeah. with glimmercate movement, Goro could get out, but they're going to shadow Graven, and maybe in any TP, you were thinking about it, but no, the tether away over the green wave, just keep running, Goro, 22 HP, oh, they're going to pull him up, and the Archers have got it! Level escape, put to middle lane. He just bought a lot of time there where Arteza is going to get, what, two, three hits in on that tier two tower with Godstrain popped. That's a decent amount of chip that Kuro just bought his team. It's really that excellent play. They're getting the hell out of there now, but yeah, Kuro, I probably gave him everything he possibly could. The armor, the shallow grave, the Kareem Ray was coming at the right time so he could tether himself out if he could just buy himself a couple of seconds. And it kind of shows you, that's how much effort you got to do to bring down a Wisp. What do you do when he's tethering over to a Sven and giving that same level of heal and potential escape to him? Mm -hmm. How is EG meant to find the deeps to kill him off? Like, the Shiva's guards up a little track. Okay, that's fantastic. Yeah, a little bit more control, a little bit more survivability. Does Fear actually have to go in? I know I mentioned it before, but do you try and go for the refresher orb just to find the damage, or do you go a different angle thinking, I have to survive long enough, but maybe I can get a, well, I'm not gonna say a second ulti off, but something. I think you need a secondary armor item, so I wouldn't mind the Assault Kiras being picked up for the Razor, and then you have the Shivas um, from the Leshrac, right? You've You're got right. the two armor items. I think that makes the most amount of sense. You consider the refresher later on into the game, perhaps. Well, he bought the Hyperstone as well as the Blade Mail, so it will in fact be the Assault Kuros. While the full Daedalus is now completed is over on RTZ, this guy's cracked over 20k net worth. And uh, the damage output is, I'm not saying becoming ridiculous, but it's definitely getting up there. Dyer's oh, look at that cute little fisher fallen. block actually keeping the in that tier 2 tower. And Samael's already taken the tier 2 at top lane. As long as he doesn't get caught, but look what Zai's doing. Yeah, he's, he's snowballing in, started with the Glimmer Case. Support, relocate, Koro's bringing in Arteezy. He will set her up, Blink Decker's a cool down, but Samael can't get out in time, and in fact will deny himself in front of the relocating secret. Good deny. In fact, I'm a little bit surprised he didn't deny immediately when he came down. Oh, secret, just unfortunately. Timing, not playing into their favor, favor here. 48 seconds too early. Why is she getting a second shield? Yeah. 
I mean, Double Sheep is, it's it, like the, the Leshrac needs, uh, he feels like he needs some sort of armor item, right? And Double Sheep is, is not necessarily the worst thing in the world. Uh, just being able to have that armor item on the Leshrac, I think, means a lot. He's obviously not going to go for the Assault Cure Asset, save for the Razor. So he goes for the Shivas, and obviously Shivas is a natural core item for a Phoenix as well. It's just the double up, but it's fine. Looks like Dazzle's also getting a little bit more money. We've got a, a VIP booster over now on Puppy to go with his Solar Crest. It's a very difficult to kill off Dazzle, not to mention what that item's going to be going into next. But the one thing which is uh, not surviving is the fact that S4. He's down to six Bloodstone charges on this Zeus. It hasn't really been in his game so far. 5 4 4. He's been doing a lot of split pushing as his Zeus. With the early boots of travel yes. pickup, he has actually been keeping both the top and bottom lane consistently pushed in. Uh, the Bloodstone is still giving us enough mana regen for him to spam out Arc Lightning with impunity. And ultimates occasionally just to be able to spam out evil geniuses just like that. I think it's about time Artizi picked up that double damage room from down the river. Kuro's already got himself a bounty inside of his bottle. He took another bit and a half before he has to pick it up, but if they can find an opening target, Artizi can just go to work on it. I know the crowd is already getting a little bit excited about the fact he can face only one with an ancient stack. Oh my god. We're actually going to try and solo Roshan. Look at that damage! This is Ow. actually a relocate Roshan play, and it catches Eve G. Out of guards here. They can't even get there in time. Maybe they can clean up one or two heroes. Oh, they lost the West, which means Artizi is not giving up. Malgo's in right now for the task of the Yul to set up into the follow-up stun. Zydas have Quimic him as well as Cheese. Snowball for protection. He needs a target to come out to potentially just blow out his cheese. And he goes down to Aoi. No cheese being used. No glimmer. He'll just accept the fate. But mean top, meanwhile, Arteezy with the back of the double damage room still has God strength. And there is no actually there is a fortification to save him. Koro, shallow grave, Samael's just chasing him down. Now the Yule Scepter. Koro refuses to die. Now he will back into all middle way. A long way down, four star from Esmeralda. Don't bring him up with some mail. Turn to the pass over. Artizi just turns to the sun. He's got two lucky people. He's got one more swing tying it up. He's in trouble. Moving over towards fear. Because you know what just put under. The Aegis he wanted to trigger him. There's no pulse coming to Artizi. They burn him with a sun ray. And this is not a tanny arsehole. He's going to go down. Artizi just turns to the sun. He's got two lucky people. He's got one more swing tying it up. He's in trouble. Moving over towards fear. Because you know what just put under. The Aegis he wanted to trigger him. There's no pulse coming to Artizi. They burn him with a sun ray. And this is not a tanny arsehole. He's going to go down. Evil geniuses defending Seeker as they aggressively push into their tier two tower. That's a big kill as well. The Shrek got almost 500 gold from that kill. So and he shared it with plays. three allies as well. So many clutch plays being pulled out by evil geniuses. And it all starts off with that very aggressive relocate Roshan play. Very few times will you see that because most of the time you just don't have the physical damage necessary. I mean, everyone sees that relocate ping, right? So you're just telling everyone, hey, we're doing Roshan, but we expect to take it so quickly you won't be able to get there in time. Evil geniuses, though, I was going to say before that whole entire thing happened, both teams know Roshan is up. So he got it out earlier and it wasn't there and it was getting later into the timer anyway. Both teams knew Roshan was going to be up. That was the opportunity for both teams to, to smoke up and go for the gank. EG did that, a secret made that very ballsy maneuver that obviously didn't play into their favor. Uh, the hilarious thing is that it was, it was the play after which kind of like tilted the odds. Yeah. Like after you had that blink away, Secret could have just got themselves out scot free. Mm -hmm. But when you're walking around as this event with so much damage and just the confidence of having Kuro behind you, like yeah. you, don't, you don't blame him for trying to force out the tier two tower, but you have to remember EG will be there in Winter Wyvern. And... Is it a fantastic hero for trying to like just play around with it? Not to mention the fact that the track is very, very farmed up. At the same time, I'm also seeing Puppy now with a full rod, a full rod of Atos on this dazzle. Control factors are just coming through the roof for Secret. Everyone's got a little bit of everything, and S4's also got 3.7k gold on this Zeus. I'm interested to see where he wants to put, put this money. Is it the Ag? Is it more of a control item? Do you try and go for a side device up against someone on EG? Because you don't have a BKB on fear. He did not go for the immunity. The Scythe of Ice would be a little bit better if maybe he had a blink gap. But instead, he's got the four staff, right? So he doesn't have that full blink in instant stun. Like the smoke. Where's the jump? S4 sitting on the back line. He goes round giving the vision. PPD. One hit from RTZ with a stormball combo. They move over to fear. Is that a click? Well, it is currently an old. Oh, 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 Seek. 
Akron, EG only losing their captain, who was the first casualty of that fight. So they even cursed up the melee creeps so it can keep pushing. Again, the synergy with the evil geniuses landed. This is why secrets need to play aggressive early on. This is why they had to play near perfect because they need to be able to end the game. Before you see these synergy in team fights that evil geniuses are revealing every single time. Racer static linking up as Sven and then you embrace him. So that Sven can't even hit fear. He ends up losing 224 damage in the process of all that. The combination of both embrace as well as winter's curse, keeping him near the racer but unable to and exactly what EG wanted. They Dyer's force into the tier three tower, they chip attack. it down to two thirds of its life, and they get the buyback out from Zven. That's what they were hoping for, and that's exactly what they got. They also had a buyback from the Tusker. So this money is being expended by Secret, and you're gonna see a very, very drastic change in that net worth graph. It just goes straight up by almost 10,000 net worth within the space of three or four minutes. It hasn't been long, and the experience is almost jumping up further than that. Bale of Discord is now being picked up by Universe. This is going to help out the Lesh Rank's damage immensely. And by the way, the Lesh Rank is not going to die anytime soon. He's got 16 Bloodstone charges, tons of mana to expend, but he's also finished up the Octarine Core. As we mentioned earlier, with the Embrace available to him, plus a large amount of control from both the Winter Wyvern as well as the Earthshaker. Even the Egg being an obvious target for Secret a lot of the time. Some male may not feel much pressure at all, so we can play very aggressively into the enemy team with the Pulse Nova, start getting the steel, and the Octarine Core with Pulse Nova is insane if you're hitting five heroes with it. Time to go strat to scout it out. All, all five heroes of EG moving down the mid. This isn't for a smoke gang, this is literally just to walk together straight down the middle lane. Oh, and why not? I mean, they're in such a great position. Zeus has for actually going for the Dagon with the gold that he grabs. So trying to get that extra bit of burst damage, I can understand it. They need to try and finish up the Evil Geniuses heroes quickly before Pulse Nova statically. These sort of big damage over time abilities are going to work. I'm not just not sure how they're going to be able to find the correct initiation. I think they managed to find a blink in and a multiple hero storm hammer. I don't see how they're going to win the fights. For now, right now, Atizi just wants to keep the top lane pushed out. That's the primary goal. Samal just also BT'd himself down to the bottom lane. So there's a little bit more space for Atizi just to force EG back. Uh, Secret had perfect vision. In fact, they even saw the ward which EG planted, which now Puppy is coming up here to T-Ward. They used the lightning bolt to get rid of it. Radiant's top tower is so the vision from EG is not really that terrific inside the Radiant jungle, especially if S4 finds the second ward too. So EG, as far as vision on the Radiant side, on the Die side of the map, they've only got one ward in the bottom lane. The rest of it's down to the creep wave and their hero positions. Yeah, and this is, uh, I want to point out another reason that the uh, the pressure was on Secret Radiant's to try and take this early attack. because look at Evil Geniuses, they actually have two percentage based heals. Uh, the Phoenix's Sun Ray, which is now maxed out, is based on the Phoenix's HP and damage as well as heal. And then you've got uh, the, the heal coming out for the Embrace as well, which is again percentage based. So as time goes on, this is actually going to scale very efficiently for Evil Geniuses. You can watch for their effects as we go into our next fight in a moment. Looks like uh, the line on the box is being drawn by Puppy. Wants to check out and see what's happening just around their ancient area. Roshan is still another one minute away from potential spawn time. Well, we've seen how quickly that can go yes. down. Where's S4? He's going to actually scout on top of the hillside, but that's not where the Radiant Observer Ward is. EG is being a lot more clever. In fact, they're peeking out where they think it is, and yep, S4. No, he's actually... He, he threw two lightning bolts and actually missed the ward, which means EG still have perfect vision of Secret, but Secret will probably feel very comfortable that there's no vision there. Evil Genius is wanting to wait out this next Roshan. They, again, they have so much value. If they're able to get that Aegis, first of all, Leshrak is well, probably one of the better heroes to get an Aegis, and then she's also being picked up by whether it's the Leshrak or the Razor. Like, it's a lot of value there as well. So this is something that Secret cannot allow in any stroke of the imagination. They have to go for some sort of pick-off or fight and then claim Roshan for themselves. That's their best play to be able to still win this game one. Well, they'll be waiting a while, man. Roshan will not spawn until we hit roughly the 47-minute mark. So they've got some time for this. The rest of the time, just commit to farm.
What do you actually want to see Arteezy go next? Like, you got the BKB, you could drop the TP scroll and pick up another, another big item. Is it just always Aegis on the back of this event? Or do you say, you know what, we can keep him alive, do we go for something else? We go for like a Monkey King, but you go for extra damage on this event. I mean, there's no evasion just yet on the side of Evil Geniuses, so an MKB is not a necessity. I'm actually not sure what his best damage item is at this, at this point. I honestly just don't see a, a better way. He's just going to be cutted more and more often as time goes on. His four stats, the veils are being picked up. Like, there's so many factors that EG can grab these sort of utility items to try and kite around the Sven. And then there's the natural synergy of Evil Genius's lineup against that Sven as well. So I honestly think that he has to go some sort of, like, in my opinion, Toby, let's go Divine Rapier. I mean, let's just go in all in item and try and win that one team fight through one or two hits that manage to pop a critical, eliminate a hero immediately on the onset of a fight and try and snowball that from there. I don't see how he's going to be able to win these fights without some sort of critical all-in item like that. That's, that's a very, like, your all-in is the word. If you end up losing that and giving it over to basically anyone on the EG lineup, you are running the risk of just throwing away game number one of this best of five grand final. Honestly, Toby, I look at the e e secret at the position where they have to make some sort of dire circumstances sort of rush. But the most likely option, in my opinion, would be Abyss of Light. I think he does need that extra lockdown. It'd be huge damage increase. I'm down for that. Bottom lane, Puppy trying to run out of here. He goes into the tree line. Shallow Grave and TP out. The sun's already gone. Maybe he can give it a shot. No, the damage, the damage, the pressure is there. That's what they require, the secondary stuff. But that's fine for them, S4 was still capable of escaping. And he might be down a dazzle for 60 seconds, but he's got Radiant's buyback and in support The secret. They're okay with this, as long as Roshan doesn't spawn up, but hey, 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 the big man is up. Another really efficient item for this Sven is actually Heart because he is a strength hero and the big, the obviously the natural amount of strength you pick up from a Heart is very efficient for him because when you increase your stats obviously you get a big benefit out of the screen um, which is why that Sven is probably one of the most common carries to go for a Heart going into the late game but again I'm just not sure that without the control offered by Abyssal or an incredible, incredibly high amount of damage that Sven's going to be able to win these fights is he's kind of really so Low, but he's um, backed up by just a bit of magic damage from Zeus, and that's kind of it. You, hit the, you hit the mark perfectly, man. It has to be, it really has to be the Abyss of Blade. Hold him in position, and then just beat the crap out of him. And you're only going to need maybe one or two hits. The four stars will cause you problems. Now the fact we see an Eye of Stardy also over on the Razor, you're going to be slowed inside your own BKB. This is really problematic for him. Uh, and Roshan, how fast can it be done? In fact, is Secret even... Yeah, actually, it's not being done fast at all. This isn't Secret doing it, it's EG doing it now, and they're down. Damage against Roshan is quite oh, minimal. But he triggers the God Strength. They want to come in through the top. Fortification will have to be popped. While S4 putting pressure on the tier 2 tower. And EG, they are coming back. Kuro just wants to run away. The Glimmer Cape is up. So when PPD and Universe don't see where they are, they run straight back up the lane. And Zai, with this fresh blink, is going to relocate the mail. It's going to go for the sub. They relocate in for Roshan. And the damage from RT is so intense. Roshan's already down. And the cheese will also fall into their hands. They've actually got two cheese now, one on Puppy and one over on Zyme. You can see exactly what Secret were doing there, right? The moment you bait TPs up to the top lane, they know Evil Geniuses are not going to take Roshan that fast. The moment they bait TPs up to the top lane, all they have to do is back Smile off away. Oh, Smile blinking in, going to go for the full-ups on Kuro, but actually getting interrupted by this four. Kuro will be able to glubicate himself away to safety. Yeah, very nice lightning bolt to be able to intercept that long animation, the split earth stun, and secret is their past opportunity for him. So what can pick off? Some battle already used the stun. You all set the route, blue tag in one second. Now he comes down, he goes down for the damage from RTZ. Samar can take to a lot, the figure can't find the space. 30 seconds on the sideline, and he's in. He falls out and blink tag it up to try to get close up for this Echo Slam damage. No follow up stun. He's down for the count. 60 seconds, but more importantly, that all these down for two minutes, but look down the bottom lane. The Kree wave is coming in towards the tier 3 tower. The fear is already coming back to defense. Yeah, I think he realizes what RTZ can do. He's really hoping to be able to force a TP out from that bottom lane, but it's just not going to happen. Secret has smelled blood in the water, and they're going to strike right here, I think. The PP, even if he does come back, even if he does have a buyback here, they can force that, and they also know he doesn't have Echo Slam, which is a critical factor. So Secret must go uphill here. They must take advantage of the situation they bought themselves. Oh, there's your lightning.
through both plasma fields as well as lightning storms to mail even try and throw a little deeper one in secret okay oh, wow. now how do you go high ground when the creep wave can't even survive to get up there all right well they're just now gonna have to play i guess for another opportunity Find a pickoff, try and look for that space uphill. The problem is, I don't think they have any smokes left. Uh, none in the shop and none in inventory. So it doesn't look like Radiant's they have that kind of plane in order denied. to allow a pickoff. So they're just going to have to outmaneuver, I think, Evil Geniuses. E.g., they can do one or two things here. They can go for a very aggressive smoke play and try and catch a secret out of guards. Or they can go ahead and stay very defensive and just wait out the ages. Well, they might have found one. We've got a little ball of light hovering over the riverbed. Well, they, caught, they caught a glimpse of him for a moment. Yeah, he's backed up now. So Secret realizing EG are all missing. So Maldus walks underneath their very old wall they put on that bottom river, which is about to time out. And yep, no one in the tree line. The universe is searching for him. And there's just nothing. There's nothing at all for him. But at the same time, I doubt they're going to be too sad about this, EG. If you can find a pick-off, that's terrific. But you've already gone through three minutes of this duration of the Aegis of the Immortal. So, Arteezy may not get the best use out of this. Not unless Secret can force something within the next minute or so. And that's exactly what I think he's looking to do. He's got 6.2k gold on this map. Just yeah, run it. Like, you could just run it straight down top. So, two minutes left on it. Watch that timer. If we hit 53.30, then no Arteezy is not going to be walking around with it with immortality. Buybacks are going to be pretty pretty critical here. On the Radiant side, we have the Razor and the left rack. We're on buyback. The reps are actually just a little bit separate. He's up so far. Zai's coming in with the glimmer. They're trying to kill on Puffy. And they are going to isolate him at the same time. Zai not making it easy. They don't know that TPZ is going to send the battle. though that was the reason he was able to turn that fight with a beautiful winter's curse to stall off that whole entire entry secret could have i think crushed that fight with the onset but winter's curse stalled bump and then a beautiful embrace later on in the fight the level two coming in that's the male on the back of universe setting up for s4 if they can get this pick off it's a huge window opportunity and it's going to be the denial through the bloodstone but that's still 43 seconds that zeus is on the sidelines He's now down to seven Bloodstone charges. Boy, that buyback from Samael definitely paying off now. He picks up the Boot of Travel, level two, TPs into the Razor to be a part of one kill on the Tusk. Now gets to be a part of another death on the Zeus. He's back up to nine Bloodstone charges. And he also has the full side device completed. Another big item to be picked up and then consumed. Uh, the Moonshot has been consumed by Arteezy. 4.4k gold still on him. I kind of feel like Evil Geniuses, unless they want to go for a pickoff play with this recent type of ice. Ooh, that Stormhammer actually snagging both the universe and fear in that middle lane. But again, unless they want to go for a pickoff play at the Blink Dagger Scythe of Ice reveal, which it seems like that's the play here. This is very risky, though, because they don't have any buyback. Secret actually has all of theirs, and they should kind of know with the way that Secret... The there it is. Blink Dagger Scythe of Ice and Puffy dead on the stun, pulsed over. They come through the dazzle. He still has buyback. All of Secret have buyback. But it looks like EG are ready to push down the bottom lane. Yeah, Evil Geniuses may just stumble into a bad play here. Secret, with all those buybacks, probably can win the fight. And if EG do not get enough kills, don't manage to get buyback gold for some of these heroes, are still left with timers. Secret, and then just five man down middle, potentially take a full lane of racks. Here they come, fortification trigger. They'll protect the rack for the future turn. That's fall, followed by the mail. Not going to work. There was a boss up. Who's facing my end? 
forward. And when you go in tight, you can move back to front. And Spear is already on the front line. He punch, punch around by the wall, response from Howie. Everyone brace him up, so Spear locked in to try and get the SQ out. He's going to be on the top of All his ideas, he can't make a new answer. He's down. Under 20 seconds on the front line, but the black are going to bring him back up in time. But then Spear, he's still just standing on the front line, doing the work. Puppy, now he'll drop as a triple buyback, a quad buyback, in fact, from Secret. Universe trying to give this ball back. And then will blink himself away to safety. They actually get out after taking out the melee racks with mass amounts of buybacks by Secret. Insanely good play from Evil Geniuses. I mean, the setup there. Again, AUI seeing that Sven was running forward, not opting to go for the Roger because the obvious static link that was going to be available there. Instead, tries to jump AUI. But the thing is, AUI saw him coming and had the Winter's Curse queued up on him. So the moment that Sven blinks in, he instantly gets Winter's Curse. He does manage to get a stun off on AUI. He doesn't manage to eliminate that Winter who's been such a bane of his existence so far, and they just easily clean him up, and then the rest of Secret quickly fall. And then EG, on top of that, managing back away before they're punished by the buyback. They just managed to force out so much for Secret, and now have bought themselves a gigantic economical advantage. Look at that gold grab. 20,000 is what EG have so far here in game number one. And they're looking to come down middle lane and maybe make a bigger dent. This money needs to kick back up again as well for the DNA. Ooh, it's not even worth waiting out the time for some mail. He's got three minutes without a buyback available. So EG has got to be a little bit more careful about where they're going. I love how to fear while well, realizing that there is a lucky king bar. Just by the talent of evasion before coming up high ground because he got the BTs. So he can easily just TP back into the fight after a buyback. So they attack to the tier 3 tower. The Isle of Storm going to work there. The Mask of Man is being repurchased oh, oh, by oh, oh, He's trying to have another play. play. And fear, there's just no way to kill him just yet. Maybe now, lock him in with the shot. In they come for the walrus punch, but fear four starts away. He's got the face on him. And a secret, they're being baited out. They're actually asking them to come outside the base and fight. Zai with the shot as they found fear. Snowball coming in. Maybe he can get the walrus punch up, but how he's still going to embrace that fear. They haven't got the kill in back time. Being isolated, the double stun there, Mori comes up after the damage, the fear force up, does the shot, can't lock him in, secret, they can't find the opening to face the mail, with the slow muscles, they dive in with the extra, in the Jeevas as well, heads for too slow, and with a third, we're going to lose the two, heads for down for the count, he has buyback available, or he can wait for one minute, while Universe wants to go to war, the Nova is up and running, but maybe they can just buy bad forces down mid, they got the numbers. Evil geniuses, they can easily, I think, take a second lane of Rax here. And maybe even finish off at range Rax at bottom lane. They're going to spend a little time healing, but there's no reason they shouldn't try and push uphill. They'll come in 15 seconds. Zeus. They'll come in now 13 seconds, yep. 12 seconds. Wait for fear to have BTs. <laughs> that's, all they, that's all they require. At the same time, by the time he TP's in, that's exactly the same time Roshan yeah. spawned. If Secret are capable of winning this fight, they can get back in by taking a quick Roshan. That's a big if. Force the buyback and then back away to Roshan. Maybe the best play. But there it is. Ritter could be able to get this fight. It looks like they have right, 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 initiation. Still on the front line, there's just some of them. G down the mouth line, they got a lightning bolt. G have to be embraced up pretty early here. To keep a man there, the jump in. Walrus punch up to Mel. They're very low on the claws to Mel. Backing up, remember, this buyback is not available for him for another minute. So they can pick him off. They have a big opening. The lightning just try and slow him down. Up on high shot. Try lock him in. They found how he's a big one. Grand down 1400 on the damage. And then an isolated Nova. They can't get rid of this Phoenix. And they're going. To. Down for the count, double kill for RT. Samael looks to have a TP out in time. TP deep as well. The shots flip. The the he actually got him on the clip. How did he find him? Well, I can help that out. Oh, that's that's the triple that's kill for RT. He dropped from the mud column from the low ground to get the kill on the high ground. <laughs> Excellent play from RT. But what a catch from Sai. They need you have to get excited about a pickoff like that. Yeah, you say it's just as a fur shaker, though. What can it really mean? Well, oh, he needs to pick off the cow. He's doing this in the mid. He wants to jump off the red ball. He wants to face the Sai with the snowball of bubble. G is going to come back in. Uh, losing life so quickly. He's down. No buyback. That is a hundred second window opened up by EG. But they're still looking their wounds from the last fight. Team Secret got to go for the split push play here. They got to go through the top lane and force Evil Geniuses on the defensive while they wait outside. 
Oh, I don't want to. It's S4, Kuro, and that's easy. Like, if they all so knew, if they only knew Roshan was there, but then again, is that even going to help? I know having a second life during these fights is probably going to be useful. The cheese won't be as much. They should know. It's just, it, Roshan's been up for a little while here. If it was an early Roshan, which I didn't see, we'd be getting towards the end of the timer, or maybe we've already reached it, so... The Dazzle Weave just scattered it out. Yeah. So, Secret are very well aware that this Roshan's alive. The relocate is up if they just want to pop in. But what's Sven going to do now? Drop this Mask of Madness that Arteezy reinvested back into? Mm -hmm. The Moonshard the attack speed was just not enough. Fear can pick up his butterfly. And that's huge, right? The, the, the Sven has no room for an MKB. Even if he had the gold, he'd have to drop Mask of Madness, pick up the MKB, and again, then you have a six-slotted Sven. There's no growth there available. Mm. And if Fear actually buys the butterfly, he doesn't have buyback, and he doesn't want to risk that this point again. Will just cross the out mark here in game one, and that's easy. Whatever they can do to stop this creekway from entering the base, they're doing it. Lightning bolt stun, storm bolt, everything they've got. Now they don't. They're going But S4 wants to keep up with this. He's got four staff available. Arteezy with Blink Dagger off cooldown. Storm Bolt can't get close to PPD, but one hits down the creep wave. Remember Roshan's not PPD with a stun. That not Arthur Pass is turned on for the damage. Okay, now it's turned off. They don't have the amplification, but you do still have the Dazzle behind him with that Shallow Grave point. And they might be able to find... Okay, yeah, looking for every single wall they can possibly find of, of EG that might be watching Secret's movements. I was a little bit scared there with that Fissure laid out on the Sven. I was afraid the Team Secret two times in a row would be baited into chasing evil geniuses and immediately run into a bad fight. EG have shown incredibly good kiting abilities against Secret going into this late game. Here we go again. Poppy starts with a weave. Elite got drop down to mail as well. He is on it. The ice has come in. And with Zayn, well, he wants a snowball. It's more confusing. Right on him, and then they embrace him up. So Mail's still here on the front lines. Happy coming over the close for his fear is still the only soul tank, but they get rid of the Millie Rags for fear. But this time, they will not be able to stun him before the TP is completed. The Whistler strike down for 35 seconds. They're making a beeline for immortality, and that's Roshan. Yeah, the problem is, I don't think Roshan means nearly as much as it used to in this game. It, it could be cheese to Koro, though. That's one big thing. And maybe you could also have, like, Tusk are with Magus the Immortal. So when Zai jumps in, you can soak up a lot more. It'll definitely be a factor. There's no denying that. But it's just not the same as when you used to have an extra slot on your carry. You can give him the agent. They're going to have to give the just away to someone else. It will be S4, and sure enough, the cheese is picked up. Well, actually, didn't go to Kuro. Went to Poppy instead. You will be surprised that he pass it off to Kuro. It's just too much value yes. coupled with the tether. Well, for now, he's holding on to it. The full butterfly is now completed on fear. Buyback's available. We've got to keep watching that counter too. Winter Wyvern and Zeus are the only two heroes that do not have buyback on the map, so that's one apiece. But here comes Secret. The smoke down the mid, they're trying to do this sneaky beaky light and then just rip apart the EG bait. Fortification is available for EG, however, it is not available for Secret. Can RTZ make this game with the alleys? The full stuffed up! As he forced up himself in there, blinked away, revealed it, and PPT in for the double stun. Here also the front lines, Arteezy blinked away as he goes for the Dawn Ball. He does not want to be part of this, but Unifer might make him part of it. Shiva's guard down is Gregor, the Storm protecting Arteezy for the moment. Where they want to go to, they're facing up the universe, can they kill him? No, they need to use it to delay the Blink Daggers away. Seeker are desperately trying to disengage. Zai with the Blink Dagger in five seconds of time, he's running away. EG, can they find him? Wow. Yeah, they can! How he's on the back, now Zai, Storm also available. He can buy himself some time, and there it is again. It's all about wasting time while Samael is chasing down off the puppy. They'll lose Zion River, and Puppy will go down to Samael. Two down for Secret. EG, open up the window again. Opportunity is knocking. Two rats down, two heroes down. Team Secret are going to be forced into double buybacks here as Evil Genius steamroll right through middle and head up to the top lane for the Mega Creeps or potentially just straight to throw. Remember, though, you still have the Aegis Immortal on S4. The Fresh Lincoln Sphere over on Arteezy means that he's also got space to move and they just saw PPD plant down the aggressive board. They'll get rid of this as quickly as they can. They do not have PPD having any kind of superiority with Vicious Battle. Dropped by Half-Life, the Storm Ball, stopping PPD from getting that Fissure off as well. Arteezy you got to be careful. Hands up, and then again, Zai, crossing, hits the mail up, and then Nova, perfect position, 
this game and there was just nothing secret could do with this kind of draft they fought so hard but unfortunately